Okay, I think we're going to begin now. Um, hi, my name is Karen. Thank you so much for joining us and for this information session for our Canterbury, England program. Uh, we're thrilled that you're here to join us today. Before we begin, since we are situated at the St. George campus, we wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. So uh, we do have uh, an agenda for this session. I'd like to say that this, ses this session is meant to be very casual. So um, this is a webinar. Please feel free to use the Q&A function below. If you have any questions for us, uh, past participants, as well as Professor Bob Thompson, this is your time to ask any questions that you may have. In terms of our agenda, uh, I'm going to provide uh, brief introductions, provide an overview of summer abroad. Then uh, Professor Thompson is going to talk about the program, course details, and field trips. After that, we're going to follow with how to apply, cost and financial assistance, the application process. We're very fortunate to have Noelle Taylor, who did the program last summer, to speak about her experiences. And uh, after that, I will um, cover any question and answer periods as well as next steps. Um, so this is a webinar. Uh, know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be shared with students who are unable to attend the session um, this afternoon. So please note that this webinar is recorded as well. In terms of introductions, my name is Karen. I'm the program manager of Summer Abroad. At the back end, I have Wendy Shern, who is our program advisor, uh, who will be dealing with question and answer um, section, as well as the chat and providing useful links. We have Professor Bob Thompson with us, who will be uh, teaching this course uh, for the second year, as well as Noelle Taylor, who took this course last summer and who was also one of our wonderful work-study students this year. So just for a couple of points in regards to Summer Abroad. Summer Abroad is celebrating its 52nd year anniversary this in 2024. We've been around for a long time and our model of study abroad programs have been very successful for a long time and for a good reason. It's a chance for students to earn a full year arts and science credit, not a transfer credit, in three to four weeks. So this is an opportunity for you to complete a program in a short amount of time earn a full year UT credit that falls seamlessly into your transcripts and contributes to your CGPA. So unlike an exchange program, um, it uh, is, is a UT credit that you will earn after completion of this program. This summer, we are offering uh, programs and destinations from all across the world um, in over 15 destinations. And if you look at our website, you'll know more information about the programs that we are offering. Uh, most of our programs are taught by U of T faculty or international partners. In this case, it's taught by um, Professor Bob Thompson, who is indeed a U of T faculty member. Students take our programs for many reasons. Uh, they could be to fulfill program, breadth, or distribution requirements. And because many of our courses, such as this one, uh, does not have many prerequisites, lots of students from different years, different programs, different um, campuses, take our courses. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for you to meet other U of T students that you wouldn't have uh, taking a regular U of T student based on your own program or campus. Um, students can also take this as a breadth or distribution requirement or an elective. So you'll necessarily have to be a business and HR student. This could be applicable to other students who are curious about the subject matter. Our classes are small class sizes. So the average from 20 to 30 students. And because of that, uh, you really get to know your fellow classmates very well. You get to know your um, your, fac your faculty member, your instructor very well, as well as um, our partners. So it's a good opportunity to make lifelong friends, but also um, you know, use this kind of uh, unique opportunity to your full advantage. If you wanna know more about graduate school, reference letters, um, really be part of a, a a small uh, seminar style uh, class. This is a good chance for you to do so abroad. This is an all-inclusive study option. So a lot of the details that you usually worry about when you travel 
our office takes care of. So we are uh, in uh, close contacts with our partners at the University of Kent for this instance. And so a lot of the details such as your field trips, accommodations, um, entrance fees, um, uh, et cetera, is uh, supported and organized by our office. We also have on-site staff hired by U of T that are non-academic that do deal with um, orientation. So in this instance, the University of Kent has a wonderful department that deals with orientations, um, helps out with emergencies, um, and make sure that your stay uh, at Canterbury is very safe and well supported. And we also offer pre-departure orientations. So, um, you know, we just don't leave you uh, on your own preparing for this trip. Through the support of our office, we give you lots of information, logistical information, safety abroad um, information as well. So we want to make sure that you're well prepared and supported before going abroad and while you are abroad as well. And we are also in close contact with many U of T departments, resources, including safety abroad, um, so that uh, you have the necessary support that you need through um, U of T as well when you are abroad and preparing for your trip. Just a few more points in regards to summer abroad and its advantages. You gain professional benefits. So specifically for this program, um, you get to build your network, which is very important. You explore possibilities for graduate school. You gain practical hands-on experience. So through group work, through seminar-based um, classes, through going through field trips, listening to guest speakers, you really uh, get to know the subject matter, subject matter a lot more, be immersed into the content. And obviously you gain an international experience. As well, you make lifelong friends. Uh, believe me, you do meet lots of um, students that uh, the relationships just don't end after the end of this program. Uh, you know, years uh, moving forward, you will still be in close contact with many of these classmates because of the shared experience. You gain independence and confidence. You do gain, I'm sorry, you do add that uh, travel bug once you do uh, have this kind of experience. You become more adaptable, overcoming problems, and you gain communication and presentation skills. And lastly, you are immersed into the subject matter. You gain a full year Y course condensed in four weeks of study. You focus only on one course. So even though you do gain a full year course um, and, and, this, and it could be pretty intensive, you are very focused into the subject matter alone. The content is fresh and top of mind. Your location becomes a living textbook. Uh, not just for this course, but all our summer abroad courses. Uh, the field trips are really curated by the professor and the subject matter that you do learn is really through the passion and research of our professors as well. So this is a great way of learning the subject matter. And field trip content uh, connects uh, what you learn in the classroom to real life settings. So you're not stuck in a classroom. You go out in the field and actually learn what you learned in the classroom um, uh, in person as well as um, on the field. So just a couple of notes before we get to Professor Thompson. This is the second year we're offering our program in Canterbury, England. We're so, so, so fortunate to have a great partnership, establish a great partnership with the University of Kent. And uh, it was a great success uh, the first year that we did uh, offer this program, thanks to Professor Thompson, as well as our fellow partners at the U University of Kent. In terms of dates, uh, the program will uh, start on Sunday, June 9th, and end on Saturday, July 6th, 2024. So it's exactly four weeks. It's hosted by the University of Kent. So your classes as well as your accommodations will be at the university grounds. We're offering, offering one course in IRE 332Y in historical British industrial culture influences on the contemporary workplace. Classes in principle are held from Monday to Thursday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And there are mandatory field trips that do run during this time, as well as past this time as well. So, um, but in principle, most of your lectures will be from Monday to Thursday, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And they are mandatory. We also have on-site staff, as I mentioned, that um, also assist with the coordination of this program. 
The purpose of this program and summer abroad programs is that it's not a vacation. It is a primarily an academic program, although you will have lots of opportunity to travel on your own during weekends or even before or after the program. And your experience will be similar to that of an England a student in England. So what you're used to in Toronto, what you're used to in the living accommodations in Toronto might not be the same at the University of Kent. And that's the whole point of our programs. We want to give you that experience of a taste of, of being a student uh, in another culture, another university, and really have that type of experience. So I'm now going to pass the floor to Professor Bob Thompson, and he will speak more about his course. And I will forward the slide, Professor, so just let me know when you want to do that. Thank Professor? you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Karen. And thanks, Wendy and Noel, uh, for uh, being such great support. I love this program, by the way. I did it last year, as you know. So pleased to do it again for so many reasons. As you can see, I'm focusing on uh, some history in England, but I want to make it relevant uh, to uh, contemporary workplaces. And I think we did a good job of that last year and I hope to do it again. And I also wanted to make sure our field trips related to where we were. There's a lot of industrial uh, revolution issues that are happening in England, but a lot of them are far away. So we choose the ones that are proximate and see some really cool iconic locations as well. And I would say to you that um, uh, I studied at the University of Kent in Canterbury uh, back 30 years ago, I got my MBA there. And then, of course, I was there last summer for a month. And I was trying to figure out, was there ever a single day that was annoying or upsetting? And I think the answer is no. I think it was just always pleasant. Now, that doesn't always happen. And, of course, things can change. But uh, it just is such a good pastoral kind of location. If we forward here, you can see that uh, the map, I think, is next, where we see where Canterbury is located. So you can see that red dot. It's about uh, an hour and 40 minutes away from uh, London by uh, train, maybe a little quicker if you take the speedier train. And there's a speedier way to get to Paris. That's why I left down in there on the bottom. You can see Paris isn't so far away, if maybe four or five hours. And um, and of course you can explore all of England and London, you know, on the weekends, et cetera. And people did do that. And we will do it too in uh, some of the uh, field trips that we have planned. And um, so maybe we'll look at the next one. And we'll see that uh, Canterbury has these iconic buildings. You've already seen them posted by Karen, but the cathedral makes uh, Canterbury a special destination for tourists. It's ancient, over a thousand years old. Last year, we were able to tour it. I hope we get to do that again. And you can see some industry below the Weavers building. Uh, there's a history of uh, textile movement there. It's a walled city, a uh, Roman city for a period of time. And that makes it sort of ornate and beautiful and cobblestone. And you're probably, I don't know, maybe a 17 minute walk or maybe 22, I guess a little bit further if you go from your residence. But um, it's accessible, but you're not sort of so immersed in it that it's noisy and annoying. You get to have your pastoral experience up in the uh, university, which I just checked to see what the enrollment of Kent University is. It's 20,000 uh, students. Not all of them would be at the main campus. That's where you'll be. And you'll get to see some of them in action because there's, I think, a week overlap where we'll be there and students will still be there. So they'll be buzzing with activity for a while and then it'll be a little quieter for us to get our work done together. Maybe next slide, yeah. And I've chosen three photos of three buildings that we did frequent. I'm not sure if the same thing will happen. University of Kent is so hospitable, gets us good, um, uh, I guess, uh, locations or uh, access points. And you can see in the top left corner is the Templeman Library. We had a classroom in the uh, Grimman building. And down below is a brand new business building. We did spend some time in there as well. And we'll see where they assign us uh, come um, June. But um, anyway, it's uh, easily accessible, all this stuff. I, I got a bicycle. I don't know if anyone else did that, but it helps me. Uh, it did help me get around. I also checked out, I'm sure you could too, the um, average temperature in June, I guess, is uh, around 18 or 20 degrees. Uh, there's 16 hours of daylight in June. So it's this very pleasant time to be there. Not so much rain. And um, anyway, I'll have to say that uh, you will immerse yourself and enjoy the experience. So maybe the next slide. And here is me uh, 31 years ago. Uh, you can see me with some ducks there in the top corner. And that's the um, Parkwood residence. And I think that's probably where you'll end up. Maybe not immediately. There might be the first uh, week sort of as the students start to uh, exit for the year. 
will will populate this area. It's like a little townhouse and they're quaint. I'm sure they're not uh, the same living standard you've had, but they have a kitchen and uh, you can get your groceries. And also you can get access to, uh, you know, um, the cafeterias, et cetera. And maybe you'll hear more about that in the future. And down there is a whole bunch of my MBA classmates, all great people. I don't know if you can pick me out of that place, but I got a jean jacket down there in the bottom right corner. Like I said, always happy in Canterbury. So keep going. And maybe you're interested to know a bit about me and how I feel qualified. I'm not saying I'm the a historian. I need your help as we study. And I was so lucky last year to have people voice their ideas and help shape some of the theory we used. You know, it's a dialogue and a conversation. But yeah, I got my engineering degree in Michigan. I got a law and MBA degree here in Canada and Ottawa. I got another MBA in, at the University of Kent. And I, more recently, well, maybe 15 years ago, I got a master's of law that helps me kind of understand bigger issues. And uh, I've worked in a lot of large corporations and I've been teaching for, I guess, is it really 17 years uh, at U of T, mostly master's students, but more recently undergrads. And I, it goes well, at least I see it from that perspective. I enjoy teaching uh, the program so much and um, I don't just interact with students in the classroom. I think I'm for people who want this and some people don't, but I try to be helpful and a mentor or, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a longer term assistance. Anyway, so that's me forward a little bit more here in the slides. And I've uh, put together, this is the same description we lose, used last year. And uh, the uh, course description basically suggests that understanding British history helps us uh, through the lens of the three weeks where we look at stakeholders, you know, the unions and employers, workers, trade unions, etc. We look at um, the capital that employers used, sometimes to the advantage of the nation, sometimes to the disadvantage. And then we started looking at the governance and culture, and we did that with our visits to various places. And using those perspectives, I asked us to start to think about how it all came together and impacted us, wherever you're uh, stationed, say in Canada, how does the British Industrial Revolution impact us in positive and negative ways? And ultimately, I'll submit a tightly written uh, essay at the end. And I'll show you those assignments. I think it might be even on the next slide. There we are. I think I'll use the very same structure I used last time. I My theory is that uh, I like bite-sized assessments that can give you confidence as you go along. Uh, we'll start early and I'll uh, assess you on just a couple maybe of uh, readings that I'll ask you to do in the first week or you'll know ahead of time. And I'll ask a qu you a quick quiz questions just to get you going. And then I'm going to ask you on your own, could be online, virtually, whatever, to uh, submit a field trip experience. That was fun for me to read last year. Uh, there's uh, You can choose from the uh, reading list that I have in my outline to uh, summarize a significant article and have an opinion about it. And then it gets a little fun where I ask you to, as you starting to get to the end of the experience, uh, submit on uh, so that we can all see it on our uh, Quirkus website, photos that you'd taken that are your favorite ones with a story behind it, basic stuff. Again, this is something that's manageable. The bigger piece is, and I'll give you a couple of weeks to get it done, is a uh, paper that's not huge, but um, you know one that takes some scholarly works in your experience and shows what you think, uh, the history of England and its influence on workplaces. And of course, I want you to be there and I want you to participate. There's different ways that you can um, uh, up your grade through participation. So that's the uh, arrangement I hope to have. We go to the next slide. As far as what we plan to do, and Karen's helped me curate this as along with the uh, folks at University of Kent, it's basically what we did, a little bit of a different order because of, well, just how the time of year works. But I figure our first trip will be to London, and that will probably be on our first, I don't know, probably Thursday together, or maybe Wednesday, depending on if we can get the coach bus that we want and the timing. But as you can see, we're uh, this whole trip uh, on the bus will take us just sort of four hours back and forth. And I have some photos as we click through here. So we are going to um, understand that there was uh, work disruption. The match stick uh, uh, girls or women who um, are, have a famous disruption that happened and uh, we might get a chance to see the plaque or we might move on to the next uh, photo here. And that's the uh, London Docklands Museum. It's a very influential part of the, at the time, British Empire. And um, we get to meet uh, the curators of the museum are actually related to workers from the past. And it's well uh, sort of mapped out. And after that, we'll probably do a little tourism. Uh, see Buckingham Palace. The next slide here will show you 
uh, that. And uh, we might have some free time, hopefully a little more in that this year, because uh, I think there's, like I said, 16 hours of daylight. So we might be able to convince University of Kent to let us stay a little bit longer this year. And you can um, seek out something. And maybe even what you're doing is uh, investigating for a future trip with your friends from uh, Canterbury that you go on your own. But that's week one. The next slide talks about, um, oh, I guess I didn't put the British Museum. And I made that optional this year because of our time constraints. And I might do the same this year, depending on what we're focused on, but but it's nearby the uh, palace. Now our next slide looks at week two. We spent not so long on the bus this, uh, this week. I was surprised. I actually felt that some of our um, participants in the course preferred this trip. They went to Dover, and that's a very close, I guess, maybe 40 kilometer drive. And um, it's, uh, if you go look next, you'll see one of the um, sites for us because we're focusing on workplaces and industry is an early version of a, a corn mill, Crabble corn mill. And they started it up for us. We got to tour the whole thing. There's uh, stories of safety issues, et cetera. And uh, that was um, great for us to investigate. You know, before we go on these uh, field trips, I ask students to read an article related to this. So they, you know, when they show up, they have some information and an opinion. The next slide will show us our next stop, and that's the uh, Dover Castle. It's huge, one of the most uh, visited uh, iconic tourist sites in uh, England. It uh, faces France. It was beautiful. We had lucky weather, I guess, for everything we did. But, um, you know, we all went off on our own separate ways. You can explore the tunnels that were famous in World War II, or you can go up into that castle. Or what I did was I sat and had a nice little picnic for some of my time, just looking out onto the, uh, the sea. And so that was good. Now, that's the end of field trip week two, a little less pressure. But week three, I'm hoping to get the very same guest speaker from the University of Cambridge. We'll see. But we went on a trip, a couple hour uh, bus ride to Cambridge. And one of the things we did was uh, we took a river tour. We were able to see all the, um, and here we stopped, I guess, that first photo. Thanks for showing that. That was uh, a, a, I guess, a town market. Now, we ended up doing that in Canterbury as opposed to on the way there. But um, but in the end, you will be able to get access to uh, food, et cetera. The next uh, photo will show, I think, our river tour. That was beautiful and pastoral as well. I think um, of all the universities in England, I think the University of Cambridge is the most beautiful. Uh, you can disagree with me, but, um, but I think you'll agree once you go on the tour. And then finally, uh, we went to the university, and I, I guess um, that was awesome. We got to see a, a really well-known and excellent, smart um, lecturer uh, teach us about things we were starting to learn already, but uh, the impact of the Industrial Revolution on the economy. And I thought it was really good because we'd spent a few weeks learning, so we felt smart. Uh, first, we felt smart going in, but even smarter afterwards. And I think we needed that uh, time together to be able to get up to his level to be able to uh, sort of absorb what he taught us. So it was perfect and I hope to do it again. We'll see if he's available. And next, and this is our last trip, it's a bigger one. We are going to do this in our final week together, probably a little earlier in the week, just because it's an overnight trip. As you can see, probably spent almost eight hours on a coach. Our first stop, and this is the next slide, is the famous Stonehenge. And um, you know, it has uh, steeped in history. And we had a guest lecture, a few others too, the guest lecturer who taught us what some of the aspects of the Stonehenge is. And it's, I think, a very important site and, you know, so iconic and uh, maybe the, the most visited thing in England. Uh, it was not huge. So students, I think, were, were maybe underwhelmed slightly, but we need to see it. And uh, that'll be on our way to the next stop. And that next slide is Bath. And uh, we had, um, I guess, more free time. There's nothing specific I wanted people to see there. So people sort of spread out in their own direction to see things. But this is the baths, the Roman baths of this beautiful town. And we had a pretty good arrangement there, thanks to Karen's bookings, that we were able to stay overnight in a you know, very accessible and uh, calm uh, residence of the university. Um, and anyway, I think it was a nice way to, uh, to learn about uh, some of the other aspects of England. And in particular, if we go to the next slide, uh, the Toll Puddle Martyrs starts it all off. We'll end with it. There's a festival that occurs this year that we went. I mean, last year it was rained out from a huge storm, but we were lucky enough to uh, get a special uh, on-demand lecture from the curator of the museum to get a sense of just how important this event was. It's celebrated 
by unions as uh, the first time that, um, I guess it's in this case, farmers voiced their discontent with the salary and they were punished for it. They're actually, they're martyrs because they were sent away to Australia after being uh, convicted. And the next slide shows you why I think it's so important. And uh, they came, uh, of them, uh, most but one, came to Canada and they lived in London area. And uh, I took this trip a year ago to take a photo. And uh, there's a movement here in uh, Ontario to keep them uh, remembered and they're collecting donations to uh, keep their, uh, you know, the memorial sites updated. But it's a super important thing to England. We don't know a ton about it here in Canada, but it has a Canadian connection. So I thought that was a pretty great thing to focus on. So we might read about it right away and then see it in practice at the very end of our time together. So that's the end of that slide and we're close to the end, but I did include a couple snapshots of me. We graduated at the cathedral, so you can see me there. My tie is not so straight. And you can see me over there sort of uh, photo bombing some of my favorite friends who also lived uh, in the next door to me at uh, Parkwood, good people. And I do hear from them from, from time to time. And the woman in the middle is now a professor at Hong Kong University, which I think is pretty awesome. So, um, that's my experience. I want to share it with you. I guess the thing I would say before I wrap up and hand it back to Karen is my goal is to make things calm and peaceful and a learning environment where you feel good about being in class and comfortable to share your ideas. And I know you're all smart and it, it helps improve the classroom discussion. So um, that would be uh, my advertisement. So please join me, at least think about it uh, for a good experience. Thanks, Karen. Thanks very much, Professor Thompson. Uh, that was great. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to working with you again uh, to uh, prepare for uh, the program coming up in a few months. So if you have any questions for Professor Thompson with any of the course related material, the syllabus, um, now's your time. So please use the question and answer function below and uh, ask him any questions. So thanks again. So I'm just gonna spend the next couple of minutes uh, just talking about the program, the activities, the accommodations before um, passing the baton to Noel. So in terms of our program activities, um, you're not just going to lectures and field trips. Uh, this is really part of a program. So our partners at University of Kent, uh, they do organize program activities for our group. When you do arrive that first weekend, there will be a welcome meal organized by the university, as well as a fare farewell buffet um, at the uh, end of the program. There will be a cathedral entrance and tour provided for our group during the first week, as well as campus and city tours led by student ambassadors of the University of Kent. So that first couple of days that you're there, you're gonna be jet lagged, but you're also gonna be well supported and um, taken care of by uh, the student ambassadors. There will also be a trip to Woodstable, or Woodstable uh, with the University of Kent uh, student ambassadors as well. So these are just a example of the program activities that they have in set for our students next summer. So uh, Professor Thompson's already talked about this, but Canterbury is a cathedral city in the UNESCO World Heritage Site, situated at the heart of the city of Canterbury, a local government district of Kent, England. It's very lively, it's a multinational a student population as well. So um, there are lots of useful links that are available on our website, which were provided to us by the University of Kent. So if you want to see a virtual tour, uh, more information, um, there's please visit these links to give you more of a feel of the city as well as the university. So in terms of accommodation, um, it will be similar to last year. So students will be living uh, at student village accommodation at the University of Kent. Last year, we had Parkwood houses and it will be similar to that as well. They are townhouses. So there are five or six bedroom houses with single bedrooms. So everybody has a single bedroom and shared bathroom and kitchen facilities. Now note there's an option. Um, if you are um, admitted to this program, we will give you an option to request a single ensuite for an added price but uh, you do have the option to request a, not only a single room, but also your own ensuite bathroom as well. So more information for that option will be sent to students who are admitted to this program. All, room, all rooms have a single bed, desk, wardrobe, and chair. You're surrounded by beautiful 300 acres of parkland and located a short walk from central campus. 
Uh, it's close to sports facilities, a new tennis and events arena. Bed linens and towels are included. Iron is in each house. Fans and hair dryers are available upon request. There are communal laundry facilities. There's also a reception area. And importantly, there's a 24 hour campus security. So it's great that our students will be living within the campus and walking distance to many of the campus facilities as well as the classrooms. Note that this is different than last year. Students will stay temporarily uh, in, um, in rooms, uh, townhouses during the first week just because it is the last week of University of Kent's undergrad students and graduate students, um, you will be placed in temporary rooms until you actually move into your real uh, room and house during that second week. So we will walk you through this process, but just please note that uh, you're going to be staying in a temporary house and room during that first week and then move into uh, your, um, your house during the second week and we'll walk you through that whole process. In terms of meals, it's self-catered. So as I mentioned, there are all kitchens uh, provide you with self-catered equipment. You could go grocery shopping, buy food, prepare your own meals. The University of Kent uh, does give you a Kent One card, which is part of uh, the fees that you'll be paying to U of T. It's preloaded each day with 10 pounds a day during the duration of your program. So this card can be used in a number of catering outlets and shops on campus. Uh, so we asked students to budget approximately 600 Canadian dollars for other meals and snacks. So for lunches or for um, any other meals, uh, just keep in mind that you have to budget this around that much money for other meals. Please visit our cost section of our website for further details. So this is just a uh, bird's eye view of, so last year our students stayed at the Parkwood. Uh, townhouses, but just gives you sort of a bird's eye view of uh, how much green space there is in this campus and how closely all the residences as well as the classrooms and facilities are. And again, if you want to know more information, this is just taken from the University of Kent uh, website and through the links that are provided on our website as well. Moving forward, so getting there, students are responsible for booking their own flights. We will walk you through the, the specific date and time frame that you should arrive at Kent. Uh, and we will provide a recommended itinerary to fly as a group from Toronto to London Heathrow. And then uh, there will be transportation to and from London Airport by the University of Kent if you do arrive the same days and time frame that we do recommend that you uh, you uh, you take. So transportation uh, from Heathrow to the residences and back will be provided by the University of Kent and our office will provide recommended flight itineraries to students who are admitted to the course. Uh, so in addition to booking your own flights, students are also responsible for arranging their own visas if necessary. However, our office is more than happy to provide supporting documentation uh, to guide you through the visa process. Now I'm going to ask Noelle uh, to speak about her experiences uh, last summer at the University of Kent and taking this program as well. Noelle, welcome. Hello, everyone. So my name is Noelle. I'm in my third year at U of T majoring in industrial relations and human resources. Um, I took part in Can the Canterbury program last year. It was the first year that the program ran um, and it went so smoothly, which speaks to how well the program was structured for its first year going, I felt like everything was seamless. Um, so the first thing I'll say is the classes, uh, they were nine to 12, Monday to Thursday. I felt like that was the perfect balance because it allowed for your afternoons for to explore um, and you also had your weekends that meant. Class sizes are small, so I think we had like 18 students in the program last year, which I personally liked because it allowed for a lot of classroom discussions during class times. Uh, so it wasn't always like uh, all lecture based. You also did have the time to discuss. If you are not a major in industrial relations or human resources, I don't think that's a problem at all. Uh, I think the majority of the people in my program last year actually weren't from uh, an IRHR major, um, and they still enjoyed the courses and the field trips just as much as I did coming from um, a background with IRHR. 
the field trips moving on are probably the highlight of the the whole experience for me and I have some pictures that I took um these are not only from the field trips but also trips that I went on just spontaneous um like weekend trips with some friends that I made on the trip um from U of T so we have the Cambridge River tour I've never been on a river tour which is so much fun you literally are taking punting on a river tour um Bath I thought was a gorgeous city the White Cliffs of Dover I think Professor Thompson was speaking about how that was one of the favorite trips among the class and I think it was because it's you see the pictures of it but in person it's just the beauty is just so much more striking um the cliffs are quite gorgeous uh Dover Castle so the White Cliffs of Tover, you can actually see the castle uh, on the cliffs, but then when you're on the cliffs, you have a gorgeous view. You can see a lot. You can see France, actually, if you like really squint um, from a distance. Stonehenge, we saw Buckingham Palace, which was really cool when we were in London. I really enjoyed the London trip because you really got to kind of explore the city. Um, the Canterbury City Centre, it's only about a 30 minute walk from um, the University of Kent. Um, and then I tried English tea and I tried lots of different um, traditional English foods. So going to the University of Kent, I truly enjoyed my stay there. It was, everything was set up. There was staff that were there to support you at each point in the process. Um, you do have a Ken One card, and that can be used a variety of outlets. There was a cafe. There were um, just little like dorm, like meal like places you could go purchase food there was also a little grocery store which was awesome because it allowed you to kind of make your own foods if you feel like you wanted to make something one time so I found students used a balance of each um I had personally access to the well I think the whole class did the library and the gym as well so you do have access to the amenities and the facilities which was awesome I used the library a lot to do kind of my readings my assignments for the course and I can truly say this and I've never said this before I enjoyed going to the library because it was such it has so many windows and the University of Kent is perched up on a hill so that looks down to the city center and it was just such a gorgeous view like I would go because you can use your Kent one card at the little cafe so I'd go get a coffee I'd go like do my readings do my assignments and I actually really enjoy going to the library but then that says a lot um so that was really really fun um, another thing that I really enjoyed about staying on the University of Kent campus was when you're at U of T and you're going in between classes, it's walking along busy streets, there's lots of buildings, but with the University of Kent, you like there would be paths, so you'd be literally walking through greenery to get to classes. I stayed in the Parkwood residence and it was a perfect place because it was very central on campus. I would say I walked no more than probably like 15 minutes to get to something like the grocery store is about 10 15 minutes library 10 15 minutes and class was 10 15 minutes um it's a very modern facility so that was awesome um another thing that I really enjoyed was I had never been to Europe before I'd never traveled on my own before um and I felt safe the entire time um it really took the stress out of traveling for me because I, there were like these pre-planned trips. So I felt like I could take advantage of me being there and I could see as much of the country as possible without feeling overwhelmed of, oh, I don't know kind of where to go. I don't know how to get there. It was perfect. There are buses that run in Canterbury. There's actually a bus station right on campus. So if you want to do traveling, it makes it so easy. Um, and then there's also nearby cities that the buses travel to. So it's so easy to get around the country to explore. Because, um, yeah, you just walk right into the bus stop and it's super easy. I think that's all. Um, so, yeah, honestly, just check out the program on the website. It's such an amazing opportunity. And I hope you guys check it out. <laughs> so much, Noel. Uh, that was great. Um, just even as, as an administrator for the summer abroad office, it's really nice to get feedback from our students, especially um, considering that we, this is only our second year offering it. It uh, sounds like a fantastic experience. Thank you so much, Noel, for sharing your experiences with us. If you have any questions for Noel, please feel free to ask now, um, or even uh, you know join in one of the Discord uh, groups, which I will talk about in a couple of minutes, uh, where Noel will also be um, dropping in uh, uh, for some sessions as well. So thanks so much, Noelle, again, for sharing your experiences. It just sounds fantastic. So who's eligible to apply for summer abroad programs? Basically, if you're a U of T student, you must be in good academic standing. Just as long as you're not on probation, um, you are eligible to apply 
for our programs. If you completed one or more courses, you must have a CGPA of at least 1.75 at the time of application. If you're a first year student uh, and you have no final grades, you could still apply. Um, especially for this course because it has no prerequisites. So um, please note that you know you are more than welcome to apply regardless of program of study, um, just as long as you're not on probation and you're good academic standing, you could apply for our programs. UT students in a professional program, uh, graduate program, faculty, U of T alumni, and non-degree students can also apply for our programs. And if you have any friends who are currently undergrad students at another Canadian university, they could apply to take this course as a visiting student. So that's also an option. Uh, they will just have to get permission through a letter of permission through their host university to transfer the credit, but they could also apply as well. Please note that current U of T undergrad students will take priority taking our courses, but we do have uh, visiting students that take our courses each year as well. So before you apply, unfortunately, COVID hasn't really escaped uh, us uh, just yet. Uh, for travel during COVID-19, please review the COVID-19 planning page from the Safety Abroad um, website and go through the travel checklist to guide you through important things to do before you travel. You must be fully vaccinated by completing the vaccine series as indicated by Global Affairs Canada. And just review the FAQs on our website. If there are any announcements, or any news, we will certainly advise students about this if the time comes or um, if we get any kind of um, any new updates through uh, Global Affairs Canada. We're very thrilled to uh, offer a new page through our website for equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, so for EDIA resources. And we are just committed to making sure that students um, have the necessary resources and open space to speak with us in regards to um, taking our programs. So visiting this new website, you have resources to following student communities. So we have on the right hand column there listed a few of them that we do um, we do provide more information for. But we are really committed to the principles of equity, diversity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. And we support participants in your study uh, abroad experiences. We wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to speak with us uh, if you want to explore more resources as you consider your summer abroad opportunities that meet your needs. If you want to ask more questions or chat with somebody about EDIA, we have a uh, advisor, uh, you know, Jan Su, who is more than welcome to speak with you one-on-one -on -one about EDIA and you can set up an appointment with her um, using our website and our appointment um, our appointment section through our website. In terms of accessibility abroad, students who require accommodations such as extra time to complete assignments, adaptive technology, barrier-free environment, should register with their campuses, accessibility services office so that an accommodation plan can be put in place for the course. We do require a letter of accommodation to be uploaded to the application within one week after being admitted to a program. Note that the range of accommodations may differ from country to country, so we cannot guarantee that sites will be able to offer the same kind of accommodations that you have at U of T. And please note that you're strongly encouraged to contact our office as early as possible to discuss sites that might be well suited uh, for you and so that maybe we so that we may be able to provide the best possible student experience um, that you are after this summer. In terms of the application process, applications are now open. Uh, and so they're all done online and the application deadline for most of our programs, including this one, is February 1st at 5 o'clock PM. Now when we assess applications, we look at two basic sets of criteria. It's not done on a first come first serve basis. So it's a, it is a competitive process. And the two, two components that we do look at are academic suitability. So we take a, like, we take a look at the program that you're taking, if there's any prerequisites that are needed. Um, we also take a look at your transcript, uh, specifically your last 12 months of study. In addition to that, there are, we do read all of your personal statements. And it's just in a response to some questions. Uh, so there's no perfect answer to these questions. 
uh, but we want you to honestly answer the questions and so we can find out more of the reasons why you're interested in taking this program, how you're going to prepare for this program, how you're going to contribute to it, and how it's going to fit into your academic plans. So again, uh, you know, take a look at the questions, create an account, take a look at the questions that are asked, and just as long as you submit your application by February 1st, you should be good. The last step of submitting your application is to pay a $205 application fee. And this fee is refunded if you're not selected to the program. Please note that if you are interested in taking another program or applying to another program, so say for instance, you're interested in Canterbury, UK, but you're also interested in South Africa, um, you can apply to both just as long as the programs do not overlap. But there is a separate application for both programs, and there's also separate application fees for both as well. You can apply to up to two summer abroad programs each year. Students who are offered summer abroad awards and choose to withdraw from the program will not be refunded any portion of the application fee. So this is just a snapshot of what the application looks like. In this case, this is for Oxford, but it's very similar to, um, to uh, application you'll see for Canterbury. Uh, the only thing is that there's no first choice course. There's only one course that is being offered. So you, it's more of a seamless process in terms of going through the steps. Um, Noelle actually um, has made an amazing how to apply video. So if you want to check that out, go under the apply section of our website and you can watch this five minute video. It takes you step by step on what you should look out for uh, while completing the application. So it's great that Noelle did this for us and I highly encourage you to check out this video while you are considering applying for this program. So you know what to watch out for and what to prepare for as well. So decisions will be sent in late February or early March. So please keep an eye out in your for your inboxes for any notifications. Note that admissions for on-site summer abroad programs is conditional upon the Government of Canada allowing travel outside Canada. So if we do offer you a spot for the program, that's great. If you do accept it, you have one week to confirm your participation by paying a non-refundable $1,000 deposit. If you decline an offer, you will not get your application fee back. And the remaining fees for this program is due on March 27th. So this is all on our website. This is just a snapshot of the course chart for the specific program. There are two components to look out for uh, to, to look out for when reading this cost chart. The first part is fees paid to U of T. So when we say fees paid to U of T, this is really fees paid through our um, summer abroad portal. This includes, I'm sorry, since 2005, I should say $205 uh, for the application fee. And there's also a course fee, a U of T incidental fee as well. Um, there is a field trip fee uh, that's attached to this program as well as accommodation fee. So everything as part of the, these line items are paid to U of T. The other component is other line items that you should budget for, and this includes airfare. So as of December, uh, 2023, uh, the cheapest direct flight that we could find from Toronto to Heathrow, Heathrow was $1,100. So this could be cheaper and this could be more expensive, depending on when you choose to buy the ticket or even where you will be departing from as well. So that's just a ballpark figure to look out for. Um, as I mentioned, we like to tell students to budget approximately $600 for meals as well. And you're also responsible for mandatory medical travel insurance, visas, as well as miscellaneous expenses as well. So in total, uh, for domestic students, approximate total program costs is about $8,900. And for international students, it's about $10,000 as well. So please visit our website for more information and ask us any questions now if you have any questions in regards to any of the line, line items we have indicated here. So now let's talk about financial aid. We do have a general summer abroad award application uh, for financial aid that is embedded in our program application. So all the awards that our office administers, you will be considered for all of these awards if you do complete the summer abroad application 
award application on our portal. By completing the award application, you'll be considered for one of these awards. Funding is open to domestic U of T students based on financial need. Award amounts vary uh, and it's based on demonstrated financial need and destination. Should you be selected for an award, the amount will be applied towards the cost of your program. So you, it won't be paid out to you through um, ACORN. It will just be deducted on your invoice through the Summer Abroad Portal. We also are very happy to uh, be offering four awards dedicated to IDA um, at $5,000 each. So more information on this award is on our website. So you may be wondering, what are the criteria? You have to be a Canadian citizen, permanent resident or protected person or a refugee. You have to be a current University of Toronto undergraduate student that has completed at least 4.0 UT credits by last December 31st. So your CGPA has to be at least 2.25. However, some awards require a higher academic average. So we're going to take you through the prompts on our application making sure that you do um, check yes for all of this criteria before you move forward with the application. Lastly, you must document have documented financial need. So if you're an OSAP student, we would like um, a, a screenshot of your, of your latest OSAP statement. Um, if you're, uh, if you're uh, sorry, if you are have any kind of other provincial student loans, from the bank or from other provinces, or even your tax assessment through uh, your parents' tax assessments from last year, that could be uploaded. But we need some sort of documentation that proves financial need, and that's also part of our application. So more information is uh, located on our website if you want to know more about our financial aid award through our summer broad office. We also offer limited number of merit-based awards for domestic students. So Woodsworth offers limited merit-based awards to U of T students participating in the summer abroad programs. As we may receive more applications than funds, applicants will be assessed on the overall quality of your application, which includes a small statement as well. If granted, the value of the awards will only cover just a portion of the cost. So it's not gonna pay for everything, but it will surely help you in terms of the cost uh, in participating in the program. You have to complete a supplemental summer abroad award for merit uh, to be considered for these awards. So you submit your application first, and then you could uh, fill out a supplemental award application for merit if you choose to do so. The award criteria for merit-based awards is that you have to be a current U of T undergraduate student. You have to complete at least 4.0 U of T credits by last December 31st. And your CGPA has to be at least 2.25. However, considering these are merit-based awards, the higher your CGPA, um, the better. So um, yes, we have that option for you as well. In terms of finances, we like to say that you should start budgeting now. Your finance, your final payments are due on March 27th. And you should check with the registrar's office, your campus international offices, faculty of arts and science, and other departments for other possible travel awards. So the thing about being a U of T student is that you have to take the initiative to see if there's any other kinds of funding that uh, would be available for you to help you fund your program. So I really recommend to set up an appointment with the registrar's office. Uh, with the Faculty of Arts and Science and other departments to see if there's any other opportunities for funding. If you're an OSAP student, and since this is a summer U of T course, you are eligible to apply for OSAP as well. But please note that, note that the funds are not released until the closer to the start of the program, so you cannot defer your fees. Our deadlines are earlier um, versus uh, your usual summer uh, course at U of T. So unfortunately, you will have to uh, front the money first. And if you do get OSAP, that funding will come afterwards. The Center for International Experience has been so generous in uh, providing funding uh, for students through their IE Plus awards. So uh, please look into these awards as well. And students who are admitted to summer abroad programs, uh, most of them are eligible to apply for IE Plus. So please uh, take a look at their website and to see uh, what other kinds of funding uh, that you could apply for. 
And lastly, we haven't updated how to finance your summer abroad. It's a video uh, and you could also find this through our website. So if you wanna know more opportunities of funding your uh, program, please take a look at this video. It's really well worth it. And just a couple of notes about visas and insurance. As I mentioned, all university students who are admitted to this program are responsible for arranging their own visas if necessary. Uh, we will gladly support, uh, provide any supporting documents through our office, but it is your responsibility to make sure that you have the necessary visas in order to enter UK or any surrounding countries. For the United Kingdom, Canadian citizens require a passport valid for six months beyond a return date. International students must check with the embassy or your home consulate for requirements. Uh, we do encourage you to apply for visas in Toronto if possible, so you have easy access to visit our office if necessary. Uh, we do also ask for you to review the terms and conditions of travel, health and flight insurance, and also cancellation insurance as well. We will give more information about this um, uh, for admitted students uh, through the post acceptance part of our application. And just a short timeline, you're right here in January. I can't believe it's already mid-January. Uh, so you're attending program information sessions. The video recordings of our other program information sessions will be on our website um, as we speak. Um, so this one you'll be seeing on our website as well. Please take a look at these videos and uh, please attend ones that you choose to attend. We also have drop-in sessions uh, available through Discord. Um, and lots of sort of drop-in sessions, application blitzes that are available for students as well. So please check out our website and keep your ears and eyes open through social media for anything upcoming. Uh, as I mentioned, February 1st at 5 p.m. is the application deadline for most of our programs. Following that, we would like for you to keep an eye out uh, uh, on your email for admissions notifications. If you are admitted to the program, you have to pay $1,000 deposit after your notification to confirm your spot. Uh, during March, March 27th for this program, you have to pay your remaining fees. We also organize a very detailed uh, pre-departure orientation so you will get to meet your fellow classmates, hear more from Professor Thompson, know more about safety abroad, and we walk you through the specific logistical arrangements and uh, information that you'll need prior to going to the UK. And of course, uh, between May and August is when our programs begin. So uh, those of you who are on Instagram, I, please follow us at U of T Abroad. This is a great way to not only know uh, more announcements, but also uh, check, uh, check out vicariously through our students' uh, experiences last summer from each of our programs to see firsthand uh, their experiences during the summer abroad. And lastly, in terms of connecting with us, we have our website. As I mentioned, we have program information sessions and the videos. Follow us on Instagram. We also have a monthly summer abroad e-newsletter, so you could subscribe to that. You could book a virtual appointment. So if you want to want a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment with an advisor, you could set up an appointment through our website. Our um, wonderful summer abroad at student ambassadors have. Uh, created a Discord group, and they do meet every Monday at 11 a.m. So if you want to drop in, if you want to join Discord, please take a look at our website and join. This is a great way to know offhand and speak with students like Noel. Um, if you have any questions about the summer abroad experience and any advice that they could give you based on their experiences. And of course, the Woodsworth College uh, summer abroad office is uh, located in Woodsworth College. We're at the third floor. Please feel free to drop us a uh, visit uh, during office hours. Email us or call us if you have any questions during this month uh, of applications. So I want to thank Professor Thompson, uh, Noel, Wendy uh, for their help. Uh, thank you so much. We are so delighted that you were able to join us. And again, please contact us if you have any questions in regards to this program. Uh, now is the time to do so. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see a bunch of you in Canterbury this summer. Professor Thompson, do you have any parting words for the group? No, uh, I love that experience and hopefully you would too if you uh, apply and are successful.
Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for attending and yes, uh, have a great rest of the day. Take care.